Ladies and gentlemen, week number two is on the way, which means you're going to need to know who to pick up off waivers before your league mates do. I got you covered in this video. Before we get started, I do have to say week one was an absolute roller coaster. We had some good picks. Aaron Jones, we had some bad picks, more than a couple bad picks, let's just say. Lamar Jackson, I'm talking to you, buddy. What the hell was that performance out there? All right, I'm going to take my L's. I'm going to own up to it. That was bad. All right, week number one could have been a lot better. So we're going to come back with week number two. You think that's going to put me out of business? It's not, fellas. I'm coming right back with the waiver wire ads right here. Starting it off with Jordan Love. Now, he has some big shoes to fill in Aaron Rodgers' place, and Aaron Rodgers must be very proud of this man after game number one, beating down the Bears just like Rodgers always used to do in the past. I mean, it looks like some things will never change. Maybe the Bears will never get the best of the Packers. Was his stats incredible? Not necessarily, but he did throw three touchdowns, was very efficient, and he protected the ball very well on the offensive end. He didn't throw any interceptions, which I love to see, especially your first game is an away game in Chicago. You would think the nerves would get to you a little bit. He was very calm out there. So that's very promising to see from Jordan Love. Now, it's no surprise that Aaron Jones was the most explosive player on this offense. I mean, we've had conversations in the past about A.J. Dillon compared to Aaron Jones, and I don't even think it's close. Aaron Jones, when they're both healthy, is clearly the better running back here. And especially taking into consideration that Christian Watson was ruled out with that hamstring injury, there's nobody better on the field to get the ball to than Aaron Jones. And he proved it in this matchup, having a great game. Another thing, Jordan Love wasn't really force-feeding any receivers. He wasn't giving tells on, you know, he was going to Dobbs every time or he was going to Jaden Reed. He was equally distributing the ball around, which was another great thing to see. We also have to take into account, like I just said, Christian Watson wasn't even on the field due to that hamstring injury. Once he comes back, he should be the clear number one option for Jordan Love. I'm really interested to see how that connection forms and how strong that bond will be. Over the next few weeks for Jordan Love, if you need a streaming quarterback, if anything happens to your QBs or, or whatnot, maybe Anthony Richardson doesn't play and he's your number one next week for whatever reason. We're looking at the Atlanta Falcons, which is a good matchup. New Orleans Saints, a little bit of a tough matchup there. Then you got Detroit and then Las Vegas. So not the hardest schedule in the world. Jordan Love, I could see uh, being a viable streaming option these next couple of weeks. Next up at number two, we have Roshan Johnson. This was a absolute disaster game for the Bears. But there are some key takeaways that I want to talk about, including Roshan Johnson. Now, it's a good sign in game number one of your rookie season if you are getting just as many carries as Deonta Foreman and being more efficient on the ground than any other running back not named Justin Fields. Justin Fields is a freak athlete. I don't know how many times when I'm watching that Packers game, I saw him escape close to impossible situations. So nobody's going to be a better running back than Justin Fields in this offense if you can count that as one, but Roshan Johnson might be the starting running back by the end of the year. Now, of course, this game was where the Bears were trailing pretty early on throughout the entirety of this game, but he led the backfield in snaps at 39%, which was more than Herbert and Foreman. Now, in the beginning of this season, before week number one, everybody thought Khalil Herbert had that job on lock. Now, it's more of a question mark. Johnson also led the team in passing routes while tying for the lead in targets with seven. Along with this, he recorded the most receptions with six as well. Another thing I noticed is that Roshan absolutely dominated the third down usage percentage if we take a look at this chart right here. Now, if he's going to get this type of usage, especially in the passing game, I don't see why you wouldn't pick him up in a PPR league, especially in the deeper leagues where you know your running back this week might have dropped a dud. You don't even know who to play. Roshan Johnson, you could plug him in he can get you a good number of points. With players like J.K. Dobbins, uh, we, we're not even going to get into that. I'm so sad about J.K. Dobbins. Every year it's something with this man. But with J.K. Dobbins being out for the year, if you want to drop him, pick up Roshan Johnson. I don't think it's a bad trade-off. Number three, we have Joshua Kelly. Now, Eckler is undoubtedly the number one running back in Los Angeles. But I can see both these guys getting enough work to be fantasy viable. In week number one, Kelly played in 49% of the snaps in a game that was close almost the entire way through. He was very efficient as well, averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Another thing I noticed is that there was no third option for running back. All right? It was Eckler and then it was Kelly. There was no Elijah Dotson. There was no Isaiah Spiller. I don't even think he was activated for that game. Uh, so that would explain that. But Dotson didn't even get a touch the entire game. 
With Kelly, you're pretty much limited to runs only because Eckler is obviously the pass catching guy. You drafted him super early in the first round, the top three running backs in fantasy for a reason. He is always going to be that consistent guy ahead of Joshua Kelly. But if you're going to end up getting Kelly off waivers after week number one, just stashing him on the bench for that situation where he is fantasy viable, he does get 15 carries per game, perhaps, or Austin Eckler gets injured later on in the season and you can use Kelly as the RB1 on that team. I think it's a great situation. Number four, we have Romeo Dobbs. Dobbs is a guy that many fantasy owners were a little bit iffy about playing in week number one, even though Christian Watson was out due to that hamstring injury. With that being said, if you did start Dobbs, you were handsomely rewarded with those two touchdowns. He was the most efficient receiver on the Packers in terms of catching 80% of his total targets in this game. Now, it was said before the game that Dobbs might be on a limited snap count, and that's exactly what happened, which is reflected in the chart here by Pro Football Focus. Dobbs played a total of 29 out of a possible 60 snaps on offense behind Wicks and Reed. Now, as we go forward into these next couple of weeks, if Christian Watson can get back and healthy, I believe he is going to lead the team in snap count, and then Dobbs will be a very close second. But as of right now, if Christian Watson can't go and is not 100% healthy for week number two, then Dobbs should definitely be on your radar. He's going to get a lot more work against the Falcons than he did in this game against the Bears. Number five, this was a very shocking one for me. Puka Nakua played on 90% of passing plays with a target on 43% of his total routes, which is a crazy elite usage number. Right? He finished the game with 10 catches for 119 yards and 21.9 PPR fantasy points in his first ever game as a Ram. What an absolute performance in your first ever game. Let me just say that, especially when Cooper Cup is out and you have no other options on offense, all of it's funneling through Puka Nakua, I guess. All right, although Van Jefferson still had the edge in total snaps played, Tutu Atwell and Nakua were both much more efficient at getting open in this matchup. Now, the interesting thing here is Cooper Cup is still out another three weeks. If Nakua can continue to produce at this level, I think it's a no-brainer. You got to add him off waivers and at least keep him on your bench. With so many big-name duds in week number one, if that carries into week number two and beyond, then we might have to look at playing Nakua over some of these other players. I think you can't go wrong with adding him in uh, week number two. Number six, we have Tyler Algier. Ended this game against the Carolina Panthers with 15 carries for 75 yards and two touchdowns, which is great to see for his standalone value. We were a little bit worried about Bijan getting all this work, Tyler Algier being phased out of the offense. I mean, if you drafted Bijan, you weren't worried about that. You're probably a little bit salty that Algier got those two touchdowns. But if you had Algier on your bench, then hell, you might be able to start both of these guys. We'll have to see what happens. Personally, I don't see how you take away Algiers carries after having a performance like that. I think you still got to keep it fairly even between the two with giving Bijan just a little bit more work. Now, the Falcons are just who we thought they were in this matchup. Drake London, zero fantasy points. Kyle Pitts, six fantasy points. They're not going to be really fantasy relevant on a week to week basis. The real players that you want on this team are the running backs, Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier. We finally got a preview of what to expect out of this backfield. Bijan ended up leading in total snaps and ran the most routes, ended up catching that receiving touchdown, while Algier ended up getting more goal line work and basically split in the early down situations. If the Falcons keep running the ball on a week-to-week -week basis this much, I think Algier has some really nice flex upside potential going forward. And if Bijan goes down for the rest of the season at any point in time or misses a couple weeks here and there, Algier should be on your bench ready to go. He's going to be launched into that starter position. And if you have Bijan, just handcuff the guy with Algier. Especially if, he, if he's still on the waivers, get Algier. There's no reason not to. Number seven, we have Kendrick Bourne. Bourne had a great game on Sunday, finishing with two touchdowns, 64 receiving yards on 11 targets against the Eagles. Of course, the touchdowns will be up and down and won't come every single game. But what you love to see is the snap count usage. Bourne was out there for 73 out of a total 80 offensive snaps and ran routes on 54 of them, which is way higher than Juju Smith-Schuster, who was thought at the beginning of this game to be the number one option in New England. Now, I know the Pats were down very early in this game, and like I just said, the weather was very poor. Mac Jones didn't have a horrible outing. He finished with 316 yards 
and completed 35 passes. He also had a better QBR than Jalen Hurts, who really let a lot of people down in week number one here. Let's just say that. If Bourne is going to keep dominating the snap count like this, I would probably rather have him over any other receiver on this Patriots team because this was an open position. Like, we didn't know who the the clear number one was going to be. I think we might have just got a preview that Kendrick Bourne could be that number one in New England. So I think he's definitely worth a roster spot going forward, at least on the bench for now. Last but not least, we have Zay Jones. Jones had a solid game with a great touchdown grab towards the side of the end zone against the Colts here. That was an amazing play. He ended up with 55 yards and that touchdown on seven targets only behind Calvin Ridley. The really encouraging part for Zay Jones was that he saw way more looks than Christian Kirk, who was thought to be the clear number two heading into this game. That is definitely up for question after this performance where Kirk only had one catch for nine yards. Also, Jones led the entire team in snap count and ran the second most routes on the team. Once again, just behind the number one receiver, Calvin Ridley. Now, this could be a one week thing here, obviously, but considering how well Zay Jones has played in the past and especially in this first game with that touchdown grab, I think they're going to want to keep him involved in one way or another. I think he's definitely worth holding on to, especially in those deeper leagues where, you know, your bench is a little thin. If you have Zay Jones on waivers, make sure to pick him up for week number two before your league mates do as well. Anyways, guys, I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Have a great day and peace out.